If I were going to preach a children's sermon today, I would simply say I'll preach the, the uh, words, sort of an abbreviated version that summarizes our faith. Fear not, for the sun will come out tomorrow. A belief that I've held, and a belief that most of you hold. If we were going to extend that hope, we would say, I believe for every drop of rain that falls, a flower grows. Those things in our life that tend to tear us down or discourage us are somehow uh, end up encouraging us. It was in September, a number of years ago, that an order came down from the bishop's office at the ELCA in Chicago. And as part of that, I was being asked to come to Atlanta to work with the bishop here and the theological center. I complained to them that I had a minimum theological training, although I'd had 40 years in the church. But they said, nevertheless, we want to go in a different direction. And so, in the lessons we see today, even though there is vanity, even though same things seem not to have a pattern, not to have an end, not to lead anywhere, we see that a different direction is required. As we think about what is going on in our church today, in our world, we see that indeed things need to go in a different direction. So how does this happen? In the process of transferring from the Chicago area to Atlanta, we found that we had all this stuff that we had accumulated over some 45 years at that time. What would we do with it? Well, one of the things that we did was to give it to the church, and the church had a garage sale. Another thing that we did was we let them pack it up and they put it in storage sheds there in Illinois, two of them. And the rest of it ended up in the garage here, that that we did not need. And so this story, the gospel story, reminds us of what do we do with all of that stuff that we have accumulated over all the years. Who's going to take grandma's child? Who will take the crystal ware? Who will take all of those books? Will there be anybody to help with that? And that is the dilemma that we find. We are so fortunate indeed that we have a lot of stuff. We've packed it up. We're not using it. That despite the fact that there are people who literally have no stuff, if you will. That despite the fact that there are people who are hungry. That despite the fact that there are people who are sick. What do we do without stuff? How do we handle it? How do we handle all of the things that we've worked for, supposedly, but now do not need? And now that we've retired from, what happens to all of this? And perhaps the answer lies in God. Perhaps the answer lies in statements that Jesus made over and over again throughout his ministry. Where do we go? What do we do with it? Of, is it in, of any value to anybody other than ourselves? Well, we store it up. And we store this stuff up much like we stored up some of our shortfalls. Much like we stored up the inability to forgive and to forget. Much like the ability that we have, or the inability that we have, to move on when we should move on. And so, what happens? We find ourselves over and over and over again, not able to move on, because we are burdened by all of this stuff that we stored up. All of this stuff that we kept within ourselves. All of this stuff that we cannot let go of. So, what do we do? Where do we go? What can we do about this? Well, the gospel lesson suggests something. I'm not sure it actually says it, but it does suggest that we let go of it in a certain way. 
The first lesson suggests that we have stored up this stuff, perhaps in vain, but at some point, it was useful. It was something in addition to or other than, both of those, that we needed or that we wanted. So what did we do? What is this dilemma? Where do we go? The gospel lesson is clear for us, and that clarity rests in the statement that we are to love our Lord thy God with all our heart, soul, and mind, and to love our neighbors as ourselves. It goes further and says, we are even to love our enemies. As I think about that, and probably some of you find yourself in the same position, loving some of our neighbors is difficult. Perhaps Jesus did not have in mind the kind of neighbors that some of ourselves find ourselves in. Perhaps even he did not think about some of the enemies that we may have. But the lesson is clear that in loving one's neighbor as ourselves, we have to also make sure that our neighbors have justice. And while we cannot cure everything in this world today, all of the wrongs, we can start at some point. We can do certain things to help assure that the, the neighbor and even the enemy are cared for. Not so much in a physical, loving way as we would think, but in an overall care, in an overall way of making sure that they are provided for. And we do this to a certain extent. We provide health care. Uh, the church provides care through your giving, through your donations, through your tithes. The church is able to provide in a loving way for people to a certain extent. It is said, however, that the church or congregations are unable to do the things that are really needed. For example, to take care of the needs of all the poor in this country uh, without the help of the federal government, each congregation would need to pay out about $45,000 a year. If you think about that, with a population of 330 million, that's quite a sum, and most of us cannot afford it. So what do we do? We were not intended to work alone or to stand alone in this world. God intended for us to work in community. In community means through congregations and through groups. And so that is one way we can do things. But what do we do about that stuff? The answer is quite clear. Give it away. Get rid of it. You're not using it. Give it away. Make someone else happy and bless them with the blessings that you've received. That stuff can be the demise. It can cause problems. So how do we approach this? How do we approach the gospel lesson when there is too much for an individual, for us? We approach it by being generous. We approach it by doing some of the things that many of you in this congregation or this congregation as a whole is doing. Supporting those who are hungry, supporting those who have need, supporting those who are naked, visiting the sick, uh, visiting and smiling at children, helping to provide for them, encouraging them. So what do we do? We give it away and we beg somebody to take grandma's child. <laughs>